The Mustang is under siege now. Their numbers have been greatly reduced in recent years. Some of the herds have been completely eliminated. The wild horse is being singled out for just about every problem that is happening ecologically in the western part of the United States. So many wild horses have been removed that there are now more Mustangs in federal housing than there are on the range. The Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, says it may have to begin killing wild horses to deal with a surplus of horses in holding facilities. It's kind of odd that suddenly a federal agency or any agency feels so bad for wildlife that they have to round them up and kill them. I just don't buy it. We ought to be wise about how we, you know, use our own resources. I think it'd be a powerful signal if we announce that we're going to you know, really get after it when it comes to oil shale. There's enormous reserves in the western states. The Bureau of Land Management is a significant contributor to the nation's energy supply and a leader in environmentally responsible development. The BLM has a built-in conflict of interest. The reason we're in this position is simply because of horrendous management of the program by the Bureau of Land Management. You would think that a year would be enough time to find out what killed uh, 71 wild horses around the water hole in the Nevada desert, but it's not enough time for the BLM. And if there's not enough water on the range, why aren't other animals taken off? Uh, and it's just very bizarre. I've got pictures of where wild horses lying dead outside barbed wire fences and the cattle well watered and fed inside the fencing. We as Americans need to think about what we're doing with our heritage and how we treat the horse that we rode in on. The wild horse and Mustang are the symbol of American spirit. Where are they going? What's happening? Is it a disappearing piece of our national heritage? BLM captures about 10 to 12,000 horses a year, about half of them in Nevada alone. Not enough, according to ranchers, who graze cows on the same public land used by wild horses. There's approximately 8 million cattle on public lands compared to 20,000 horses. It's difficult to believe that these public lands can support that many cows, but there's a problem in 20,000 some horses. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Cows are not removed when there's a, during times of drought, and they're certainly not wildlife, but they're the animals that people say wild horses are stealing food from. With every roundup, centuries of natural evolution are being erased. That these are herd animals in social groups, and they're suffering every time they're removed from their home territory and from their families. The gathering situation through helicopters, it's very hard on those horses. You've got to be able to gather them without running these wild horses to death. Because you can't just keep putting them in feedlots. All they're doing is waiting to die. In 1971, the wild, free-roaming Horse and Burrow Act was passed to protect these creatures from further exploitation. However, in 2005, the Burns Amendment completely destroyed that protection. The Burns Amendment actually requires the Bureau of Land Management that they shall continue to remove, without limitation, all excess animals until they are disposed of. Former Montana Senator Conrad Burns called for the sale of wild horses to be sold to the lowest bidder, which meant that they could be sold to the slaughterhouse. A population control can be accomplished without sending multitudes of horses to slaughter. But that would be very sad for the people around here to know that these horses could be sold. We're only dealing with adoptions here. You're being very diplomatic. Yes, I like the horse program and I like my job. <laughs> What happens with a lot of BLM adoptions, novice horse people will get a horse that's not suitable for riding, and they don't have any other use for it. September of 2003 marked what may be the largest horse neglect case in U.S. history. A hundred and twenty-five wild Mustangs arrived at Return to Freedom. They were emaciated, 
many of them sick. A private rancher had received over 700 Mustangs from the state of Nevada. In an effort to get rid of horses from the range, they're made available to just about anyone. The system is broken, they're not managing it properly. And, you know, sadly in the last 10 years, it's gotten even worse. It costs the government $1,500 to gather one wild horse. There are an awful lot of people who make their living as wild horse specialists, all of who are uh, making money on the wild horse, and I would suspect that not all of them really want a solution. Lobbies have really become entrenched. Gas and oil and cattle and so on have really uh, made a move to take over public lands during the past eight years under the Bush administration. And so part of our strategy in our country has got to be to say, okay, here are some, you know, suspected reserves and that we ought to go after them in an environmentally friendly way. The Congress needs to get moving on it. We've done more to destroy the American West in the 200 years that we settled it than the Indians did for the 2,000 years that they lived there. The horse is North America's gift to the world. What does it say about us if we aren't able to preserve the greatest icon of freedom that there ever was? Mm -hmm.